So uh, our theme is going to be uh, green heat waves. So in terms of site news, we were fortunate to be able to return to fully staffed cruises this year. We had really reduced staffing uh, during COVID, which interfered with a, a lot of things we were doing and are able to be back to full sampling. Uh, the Seward Line transect sampled its 25th consecutive year uh, this fall, and we will be doing the same now going into next year. And we also got a new toy. The, we completed sea trials and a new multi-parameter imaging system. Uh, and these are just some examples of the, the imagery we've got coming out that will allow us to examine uh, the fine scale spatial interactions of physics and biology. So uh, we're starting to synthesize a lot of stuff now that we have uh, all these extra resources. Uh, so uh, this is a time series of satellite data on the top, the time series of large cell phytoplankton uh, over on the upper right. And in a normal spring bloom period, the system is dominated by large cells. In the marine heat wave that we had in 1516, we see this real shift to reduced magnitude of chlorophyll from satellites, uh, as well as a shift to small cells during marine heat waves. And the spring uh, of 19, we had a mini heat wave that looked very much like we had uh, started to piece together for 1516. And uh, in contrast, uh, the spring of 2021 was actually one of the best uh, spring blooms we've seen for quite some time. So it's, it's interesting to be able to look at, at how all these things are changing by now having really fleshed out and made more available our long-term time series. Uh, in the zooplankton realm, uh, the point of the picture you're seeing right here is I take, this is an MDS plot of community composition and what you're basically seeing is the lack more or less of pattern that's driven by cold years in blue versus warm years in red. Uh, but what we do tend to find that is, uh, as a generalization, summer show increased warm water species in warm years. It just doesn't seem to be reflected heavily in the community structure. Okay, but if you look a little bit uh, tighter, uh, there's a little bit of a clustering in the last few years in the lower right corner. And if I color code this, so all of the data from the beginning of the heat wave 14 through 20 is in the same colors, you can actually see that the community structure has specifically shifted over to one edge of the domain that was normally occupied a, a much greater range of community types. And this has persisted in the most recent samples we've looked at, even in 2020, which suggests that there has been some kind of an underlying change uh, in community structure that's not reset. Okay, so where are we going next? Uh, the NGA is poised to use two modeling approaches to explore heat waves. We have our classic uh, uh, ROMS type biophysical coupled model uh, that we're gonna be using a very simplified version of community structure driven by very high resolution physics. And we're starting to do it a very elaborate equal path modeling of the system, which really uh, emphasizes community structure and species to also look at uh, characterizing the community and then be able to run simulations and hindcasts to see uh, if we can actually pinpoint how the community changes with regime shifts and, and heat waves and potentially project future states. And that's it.